video is about Dalton's law of partial pressure and Graham's law of effusion and diffusion. So Dalton's law of partial pressures states that the total pressure in a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the pressures of all the gases in the mixture. To put that sentence into an equation, we'd say that my total pressure is equal to the sum of, so that just means addition, of my pressure of my first gas plus the pressure of my second gas plus the pressure of my third gas, on and on to the pressure of however many gases I have. So let's go through an example. I want to know what is the total pressure of a container of air if the gases have partial pressures listed below. So over to the left I have my partial pressures listed. Oxygen has a partial pressure of 21.22 kilopascals. Nitrogen has a partial pressure of 79.10 kilopascals. Carbon dioxide has a partial pressure of 0 0.040 kilopascals. And the other gases within my bottle of air has 0 0.94 kilopascals. So then I go ahead and I label my partial pressures as P, and then my subscript is going to be what my gas is. So P of O2, P of N2, P of CO2, and P of my other. These are my known values. I'm looking for my total pressure, and I do that by determining and adding up the sum of my partial pressures. So I write out my equation, my P total is equal to my pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of nitrogen, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, plus the partial pressures of my other. I plug in my numbers of 21.22 kilopascals, my partial pressure of oxygen, plus my partial pressure of nitrogen, 79.10 kilopascals, plus my partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 0 0.040 kilopascals, plus my partial pressure of my others, 0 0.94 kilopascals. When I add them together, I get a total pressure of 101.3 kilopascals. Notice that at standard temperature and pressure, this is one of your standard pressures. At this time, go ahead and try your Dalton's Law worksheet number five, problem number one. When you're done, you should get an answer of 32.32 millimeters of mercury. The next law that we're going to talk about is Graham's Law. It's Graham's Law of Diffusion of Gases. We need to understand what diffusion is and what effusion is. Diffusion starts with a D. This is the spreading out of particles from high concentration to low concentration. So you've learned about diffusion in biology or osmosis where you have a concentration gradient and things always move from high to low. Same thing here with gases they're going to move from high to low concentration. So if our particles are really squished together, like inside of a balloon, and then, never mind, that doesn't work. If we have our particles really close together in one chamber and there, there's empty space in the other chamber, our particles are gonna go from the first chamber where they're packed together in high concentration. They're gonna flow through to the empty container until they balance out the pressures and the concentration. Effusion is where particles are escaping, so escaping of particles from a small hole. This is the case where you have a balloon. A balloon has particles together of air inside a balloon. You poke a hole in it and those particles are going to escape from that hole. Our rate of diffusion and effusion is going to be inversely proportional to the molar masses of the gas. What that means is as my molar mass increases, my rate of diffusion or effusion will decrease. So for example, we want to order our gases from highest rate of diffusion to lowest. Knowing that our highest rate of diffusion is going to have the lowest molar mass, the lowest rate of diffusion is going to have the highest molar mass because they're inversely proportional. As one goes up, the other will go down. So if you have the example of hydrogen, ammonia, steam, helium, and sulfur dioxide, 
What is the order of highest rate to lowest rate? Remember, you need to look up their molar masses. You should have found that our highest rate of diffusion is our H2 because it has the lowest molar mass. In other words, it's the lightest and it can move the quickest. Then followed by helium, ammonia, water, which is steam, and then sulfur dioxide, which is the heaviest, so it's going to move the slowest. Our last example to learn about our gas laws is to put Graham's law into a mathematical equation relating rate to molar mass. So the rate between A and B of my gases is inversely proportional to the molar mass of my gases, and I need to take the square root of my molar masses. So the rate of A to the rate of B is going to be proportional to the square root of my molar mass of B divided by the square root of my molar mass of A. Noting that if I had the square root of 1 over the square root of other, I could take the total square root of both my molar mass B divided by my molar mass A. And we'll do that in the example prompt to follow. So let's go ahead and do an example. We're going to calculate the rate of effusion of helium and nitrogen. First thing we want to do is determine the molar masses. Our helium's molar mass is 4.0 grams per mole. Nitrogen is 28.0 grams per mole. Next, we're going to use our equation for Graham's law. Our rate of helium divided by the rate of nitrogen is equal to the square root of the molar mass of nitrogen divided by the square root of the molar mass of helium. I like to put the larger one on top. That's going to give me a number greater than 1. That's something that I can comprehend better than a number less than 1. That, I don't think, comes as easily. So I plug in my molar masses, 28 in the top, 4 in the bottom, 28 for nitrogen, 4 for helium. If I have the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom, I can then take the square root of the entire fraction and leaving my numbers in the middle. So 28 divided by 4 is 7, so I then take the square root of 7, and I get approximately 2.7. What this means is that helium is going to diffuse approximately 2.7 times faster than nitrogen at the same temperature. So in terms of a ratio, my ratio is 2.7 to 1, helium to nitrogen in terms of their rates of diffusion. Go ahead and try now your gas, or your, excuse me, your Graham's Law Worksheet number six, problem one. You're going to follow the same steps, and hopefully you get an answer of 2.25 to 1.